<laughs> what is up, captains and cadets? Hey, we're out here fending for ourselves for our R4, for our, all our ships staked and score. And you know what? The Sage Real gameplay is rapidly coming upon us. I figured what better time than now to do a deep dive into claim stakes. Let's do this. Let's go. What's up, Muds? What's up, Onis? What's up, Boosters? Today, we're talking about claim stakes. We're not talking about land habs. Um, land habs are something totally different if you have a central space station. Um, land hab, what that is, is that is basically an apartment on your faction's central space station. It's going to be a limited supply of land that each space station is going to be offering and if we go to structures and we go to housing you can see the central space station um, different tiers on the different factions of the housing or aka the land habs that you can buy um, this is not what we're talking about we are talking about claim stakes um, claim stakes come in five different tiers going from common to legendary they really vary in price and what these guys are these these guys are um, are well there are 20 extractors um, there's gonna be all sorts of different resources offered in the sage game in the future and we're gonna send these guys down to planets to extract those resources um, so if we go to redspatula.io, I just want to touch base on the difference in price between tier one and tier five. Holy smokes. You can see that, um, <clears throat> originally, um, tier one was $32, but right now the star Atlas team is offering it at a 20% discount. Plus, um, the Atlas, um, price is down a little bit and it comes down to $23 and 71 cents. You can grab yourself a tier one which is a fantastic discount. I grabbed three right now. That's all I have is three measly uh, tier ones. One day I want a tier two, I think. But you can see that a tier two, they're all sold out in the, the Atlas price, but we can jump over to USDC and we can see that it's basically a 10X to buy a tier two, $242 all the way up from $23. And a tier three is 758, tier four is uh, 2,315 and over five and a half grand for a tier five legendary. Um, so, I mean, this is the price on June 20th, 2023. It might be different when you look at it whenever you get around to watching this video. Um, so let's talk about what you might need. Let's say you have a fleet in score and you want to feed that fleet because the R4 that the team was originally offering an unlimited su supply at very, very cheap is now getting more expensive and you don't have time to play the escape velocity minigame that gives you free R4. So um, let's go over to um, here's my Twitter page. You guys can find this link if you go over to my Beyond the Horizon 2620 um, Twitter page. Um, Andre from the Club Guild, he has this uh, cool little trick right here and he calls it cool trick. Assess what tier of claim stakes you're gonna need if you want to go passively self-sustainable. So if you if you uh, look at the image right here, he says to put your address in the search bar right here. Um, so I, I already have a, an address of a small little wallet that I have. Um, I'm not a mud in my main wallet. I just made a little mud wallet. Um, just for maybe me and my son to kind of like play around with and you know with the mud faction so we're gonna type that in right here and look at this it pops right up here's my faction mud it's a little tiny wallet only worth 30 bucks basically um the inventory you can see we got on inventory but what we really want to see is fleet i have one px4 one unibama four opal jets and three air bikes but what we really really want to see is the fleet consumption we click on that and you can see these thirsty little piggies right here. They're uh, sucking up all a bunch of R4. Um, 202 food, 334 fuel, 260 ammo. You probably can't see because of my head, but 334 um, tools. Uh, did I say tools? Food is the first one. Um, go to monthly. Um, 
it goes way up it's like it's kind of daunting when you see what what these extra small ships are actually drinking um in our four <laughs> when you put it into the monthly uh over six thousand food over ten thousand fuel over ten thousand tools and seven hundred seven thousand eight hundred ammo holy smokes so let's go back to Twitter and there's another community made resource right here. Um, it's by the Stardust Economy. You can also find this on my Twitter. I retweeted it right here. Um, with this new player driven Star Atlas economy, we heard that Michael Wagner was looking for a tool that creates R4 consumption of fleet but balances it with claim stakes. Check out what AI and Love built. So let's click on that. And this is a really cool little resource, Star Atlas R4 Daily cal Calculator. What you can do is you can type in your entire fleet right here and then offset it with the different claim stakes and you can see um, what, you what type of claim stake you might need. And I already filled it in just so we can actually check it out and save a little time right here. You can see I filled in the fleet from that wallet that we just looked at and I'm short the 202 in food, 314 fuel. It's a little different than what the uh, what the club guilds uh, calculator had but very 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 close um so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a claim stake tier one and see what that does we're gonna add just one and we're gonna calculate that and look at that now i'm in the green great job you're generating more r4 than you consume so this is a neat little um definitely a neat little resource you guys can play around with um let's just do an example of uh of, of something that eats a little bit more r4 we're gonna do a thripid oh my god thripid's a thirsty we're just gonna do one we're gonna calculate it you can see i'm way way in the red i know that the tier ones aren't gonna feed that thing i'm gonna try a tier three add that to the fleet we're gonna add one calculate that and look at that that like plenty plenty i can get rid of this tier one i'm sure Get rid of that guy. Recalculate. Look at that. So the tier, th you know, adding that tier three um, totally fed that Ogrika. So something for you guys to play with. I hope this helps. And uh, so now let's talk a little bit about the Sage game. Uh, one thing I just want you guys to keep in mind before you start buying some of those uh, large, very large and very expensive claim stakes right here you will need a certain size ship in order to fly those things around in the sage game and this is the actual sage manual and you can see the different types of claim stakes the uh, resource emission bonus just jumps going from a one to a two which is why i am interested in possibly getting a tier two claim stake um, but you can see that you can just you can use a um, tier one claim stake with an extra extra small ship, which is pretty cool. You can throw it on your air bike, not a problem. Um, an extra small for the tier two, um, so you might um, you might uh, need like a jet jet or something like that, and then you go up to a small, so you might need like a two a two four or something like that for uh, you know the tier three, and then tier four you need a medium, so like a Fimble Mamba. And then all of a sudden for a legendary tier five, you need a large ship and not a lot of people can afford a large ship. So is it even worth spending $5,000 on a tier five claim? Well, at 700% resource emission bonus, maybe you might think so. If you can afford both a large ship and a large claim stake, this might be the thing for you to pair together. Um, now a little, uh, a little word from my sponsor. Then we'll get more into Sage. Here's a new taste treat, the corn dog. Plump, juicy wieners are dipped in a thick, golden, southern-style corn batter that seals in all their freshness and flavor. If you like hot dogs, you love corn dogs. All right, so here's a map of Gallia, and when we start Sage, we're all going to be given one claim stake for free according to the Sage game manual, which is pretty cool. Now this claim stake is gonna be non-tradable, so it won't be like the ones that we're buying um, right now in the marketplace that we can buy and sell as we feel like. This one is gonna be non-tradable somehow. It must be linked to the blockchain that we won't be able to sell it. That way you can't like 
I don't know, create like 20 different wallets and then throw all the, the free claim stakes into one wallet and all of a sudden you have 20 different claim stakes. I'm assuming that is why it's non-tradable. Um, so in order to, to start playing Sage, once the game is rolled out, all we're going to need is one tiny ship, which you can buy like an air bike for like under two bucks, a little bit of Solana to move um, within the blockchain and this free claim stake. Um, but anyway, we're going to all be starting out at our factions um, central space station when the game first starts and we're all going to be spreading out into the safe zone and what i believe is the medium zone the medium risk zone i should say where the um where the jorvik um faction is causing a whole bunch of strife we have to go into this medium zone and we have to basically take um take over certain sectors and start making star bases once we um create a star base some of us are going to be defending that star base and some other people are going to be trying to go out and extracting resources to bring back to the star base and upgrade the star base and other players are going to be um going and attacking the other factions star bases and trying to basically destroy them so uh, we can then depending on your faction can then um, take over that one sector that the other faction had once ruled. All right. And one aspect of extracting resources that is going to be pretty important is that when you upgrade your, uh, when you upgrade your star bases, it's going to be giving you LP and a lot of people are going to want LP. Um, LP is basically the, uh, the way that we're going to be rewarded Atlas. It's also uh, going to be um, ways that we can get some really cool new loot that will be um, we can trade LP for in the marketplace, I do believe. So uh, a lot of people will be interested in the whole entire fighting aspect of the game. I think that's going to be a lot of fun because we can finally use our ships. Also, the exploring is going to be a lot of fun. Um, discovering new areas to uh, implement star bases is going to be really, really cool. But, but getting that LP is going to be a huge aspect of the game that I think a lot of people are going to be going after. So how do we extract resources? Well, eventually what we're going to do is each one of these sectors is going to have a whole bunch of different planets and the planets are going to unlock as our star base is upgraded. Um, but we're going to go to these planets. We're going to drop down a plane, plane stake and we're going to be able to um, extract resources from these planets eventually we're gonna have all sorts of buildings that we can build underneath our claim stake and i believe um space stations up in the air all sorts of things are going to be connected to the these claim stakes they're going to be super super important but before you go out and start buying a whole bunch of claim stakes at this moment let's listen to our ce Oh, and co-creator, Mr. Michael Wagner. Let's see what he has to say about how we're going to extract resources in the very last, last town hall. Ready? Let's roll into it. Right. So the next gameplay uh, iterative release, or, or I guess a test environment, I should probably position it as, is an extraction and crafting loop. So you'll see some considerable improvement to, um, to the UI itself. Uh, but also the mechanics that you're engaged in. I, I know there is a question out there in the community about whether or not this is going to be using real assets. And I just want to reassure everyone that yes, this next version of Sage will be using the fleet management program. And so your ships that you own are going to be usable in Sage. And in fact, that will be the only way to access um, the, the resource extraction and crafting gameplay loop that's coming next. This is also really exciting uh, for the econ team, for me in particular, seeing the continuous evolution of the economics in game and the ability now uh, uh, very soon for users to start actively engaging in uh, in the crafting system that leads to things like R4, as well as um, other uh, resources that can be refined. Uh, um, I, one, one quick... Uh, uh, two quick points here, actually. So one is that this is not a mining loop uh, as we define it. This is not uh, mining and crafting. This won't be using your claim stakes. We still have faction claims for that uh, in terms of leaks. We have a little change 
coming to that that's going to be proposed as well. I won't share too much more, but uh, <clears throat> keep your, your eyes out uh, and your ears open for an announcement from us very soon about some changes to the R4 economy. <clears throat> but uh, it doesn't use claim stakes. You'll still be using faction claims to produce R4. <clears throat> what this modal of gameplay is is what we call extraction and crafting. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so ships are, uh, you're actually using, you're consuming ammunition to destroy asteroids and you're harvesting the materials from those asteroids. And then you'll be taking those materials using uh, crafting tables and um, and through that process, creating these, materi these, these refined materials, which again, uh, uh, compound into your ability to do things like uh, earn loot through participation. I kind of cool. combine those two things into one, but uh, not using claim stakes and that this is an extraction and crafting loop. All right. Thanks, Captain Wagner. I appreciate that, Alpha. Um, so uh, just to reiterate, basically what he said is we're going to be using ammo to, um, yeah, I'm making it up as we go, but blast apart some uh, some asteroids, and then we're going to be able to harvest slash uh, extract um, some resources like you see on this page right here. Um, then we're going to take those resources uh, back to our star base, I believe, if, if not our central space station. And then we're going to use crafting tables to be able to craft our R4 that we so desperately need and also upgrade our star bases. Um, so no claim stakes involved in this um, in this very, very next um, uh, this next little uh, section of Sage that's going to be rolled out. But we will be using um, we will be using these claim stakes in the future. They're going to be super important. And I'll touch base on that in just a sec. I'm just going to scroll down for a sec. All right. So at the very bottom of the Sage Game Manual Part 2, there's an appendix. And the appendix is all about claim stakes. And this is what everyone should go ahead and read if you're interested in um, learning what claim stakes are going to be in the Sage universe and how important they're going to be. I just want to read this very um, first opening right here. Um, let's do this. Claim stake functionality is expected to be implemented for Sage version 1. Please reference the roadmap for the featured release version descriptions. Claim stakes allow the players, the player to stake a non-permanent claim on a plot of land of any planet controlled by their faction. Players will have to transport the claim stake to the desired planet Claim stakes of higher tiers will require more cargo space on board for physical transport. Once delivered to the desired location, player may initiate the staking process. When finalized, they will be able to start extracting resources from the planet. Extracted resources will go to a resource cache that can be accessed by the owner owned fleets for the transport to the starbase. And then right here is what I was talking about. All players in Sage are granted one free untradeable tier one claim stake with a few more that can be unlocked as they climb the council ranks. And here's that chart that we were talking about and also a really cool um, picture of, I believe, I, I'm not too sure exactly if this is a space station above a claim stake or the claim stake itself. Um, one thing I didn't mention earlier, I read it somewhere, I'm not too sure if it's in this section of the, the manual, but I believe claim stakes are upgradable. So if you only um, can afford a tier one claim stake or um, want to start off playing with that one free um, tier one claim stake, I believe you can upgrade it to a tier two, tier three. So if you can't afford um, one of the more expensive ones, I I believe it is not to worry, just um, grind away at the game and you'll be able to upgrade it to a more powerful claim stake. All right, so as we scroll down, um, you can read all about um, the different types of buildings and hub base center, mining drills, power plants, um, a lot of stuff here to unpack. And please um, go ahead and read this part, this appendix um, part of the Sage manual. You'll learn a lot. There's a lot more that I want to talk to in some future videos, so please subscribe and be on the horizon. Um, I just wanted to throw out one little side note. Um, a lot of people are thinking about um, claim stakes have to do with mining. You do have a, a mining drill that you can link to your claim stake, but um, there's going to be an 
Armstrong line of ships. We got a little sneak peek of that uh, earlier this week um, then through the Star Atlas team. But there's going to be an Armstrong mining ship line that's going to come out. We're going to be able to, to actually mine with some ships instead of our claim stakes. Lots of exciting stuff. So we'll talk about um, more stuff in the future about, um, you know, the hardness level of resources and um, how certain planets in certain zones um, will give a certain amount of uh, resources. We have, we have a lot more to talk about in the future, so please subscribe. I'm beyond the horizon. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll check you guys later. Love you all, man. Take it easy.